Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. Please welcome Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale is an attractive but rather unlucky actress. She was unfortunate though mostly with American films. Of course, you cannot call it an actress who makes the box office. Particularly successful films in which she starred never became. In many ways because of that, the actress didn't fly high. Since Kate grew up in a family connected with the film industry, she had little choice. And appearing in front of the camera, she began at a relatively young age. In the early 90s, she appeared in several well-known films like Much Ado About Nothing and Haunted. But almost all of her work was a British production and often filmed directly for television. Today we would like to get to know Kate Beckinsale's career and try to understand why her career is now fading. So, any success on the world stage was out of the question. The only thing that stood out in her career during those years was the excellent treatment she received from the critics. This was probably because she rarely caught the eye of the American critics, who would often criticize her in the future. Since achieving world domination without the conquest of Hollywood is impossible, the actress decided to appear in American projects in the late 90s. The first attempt was the drama The Last Days of Disco in 1998. Originally, this film had a big budget, but director Whit Stillman found out that when a writer, who was offered the lead role of the director did not want to star, insisted on actress Chloe Sevigny, which he eventually approved. The studio was initially outraged, but then cut the budget for the next movie. And the rest of the actors were taken into the project without knowing. And the only money left was for the little-known Kate Beckinsale. And here, in general, almost everyone was lucky. The movie failed at the box office, so the studio was hardly happy. But the actresses in the lead roles were praised, and it's one of the few Beckinsale films where she wasn't singled out cast to scold. On the contrary, critics were delighted with her ability to eliminate her English accent. Immediately after, Kate was cast in the drama Broke Town Palace. For this, several stars aligned in the sky. Jennifer Love Hewitt was supposed to star in the film, but she left the project because of the long shooting. And in her place Beckinsale was immediately hired, but disliked by Claire Danes, who thought the movie was a failure because Kate was too tedious. Danes and Beckinsale got a lot of criticism. This is understandable. On a budget of $25 million, the film managed to gross only $10 million. Perhaps the American Kate story might have ended there if not for Michael Bay. The director was looking for a beautiful actress for his film Pearl Harbor, and initially saw Kate and turned her down because he said she was not very pretty. However, he changed his mind and signed her. The director had Beckinsale lose weight and put her legs up, for which he will later be grateful to the creators of the franchise Underworld. The actress says she was horrified by the Bay's comments regarding her appearance. The actress received only $50,000 for her participation in this film, although the film did not meet the studio's expectations and destroyed the critics. Then Beckinsale is still grateful to Pearl Harbor, as she was noticed by the audience. Actress's career went uphill helped take off and the romantic comedy Serendipity. Although the critics met with mediocre reviews and the audience liked the picture. Here, Kate was most upset that John Cusick was only a few days on the set. The rest of the time, they were filmed separately. At the worldwide box office, 28 million movie made $77 million. In 2002 Kate had another clash with the critics. Laurel Canyon failed at the box office and got very low ratings, but critics noted their efforts. But it was Beckinsale's character that critics trashed. The actress decided to try action movies since their acting is usually not very noticeable. Underworld is a random movie put together in a short time just because the studio Sony has released a successful Resident Evil. And the studio had the idea of doing something like that. They based it on Romeo and Juliet, replaced them with vampires and werewolves. Underworld was shot in Budapest in a month and a half, spending only 22 million. The film was released in September 2003, and Underworld rocketed to number one on the USA charts. With a budget of $22 million, the film grossed $95 million at the worldwide box office. A sequel and prequel to Underworld went into production immediately, and Beckinsale was a star. The period of her career from 2003 to 2007 was probably the most intense. At this time, she could get more star status for themselves, but in 2004 the box office failed Van Helsing, which was supposed to be the beginning of an entire universe. But it was almost the end of the director's career, with Steven Summers finishing it a little later with The Rise of Cobra. 
The worst thing for Kate was that the critics remembered her again. Martin Scorsese's 110 million project was supposed to help her. The Aviator was average at the box office, as most Scorsese films are. But they usually gave a lot of bonuses to the actors. Kate was unable to take advantage of them. In 2005 Underworld Evolution came out on the big screens, and the studio spent $50 million on it. The film crossed the 100 million mark, making less profit than the first part. There is a rather curious point here. Resident Evil was always more popular worldwide, and Underworld until the fourth movie, consistently made more money at the USA box office than the rest of the world. After the failure of the Underworld sequel, the actress needed a guaranteed box office hit. And who else in the mid-teens could guarantee a box office hit just by being there? Adam Sandler of course. Here Beckinsale got a little lucky. Sandler wanted Drew Barrymore in the movie again. But she turned him down because it would be their second movie together and could hurt her career. And that's where the film Kate became interested, and Adam didn't turn it down. Like most Sandler's films of those years Click was excellent in America, grossing $137 million. The world added another $100 million grossing a total of $237 million with a budget of $82 million, which can be called a success. Next Kate decided to drop the third installment of Underworld. The studio decided to work on a prequel, Underworld Rise of the Lycans, starring Rona Mitra. Even though Beckinsale was almost absent from the film and its budget was cut to 35 million, the film made 91 million. In the end, Beckinsale failed with six movies in a row after Click, and every new film was constantly criticized by the critics. But the audience welcomed the latest movie very well. But the Beckinsale movies didn't go to the theaters. The actress's most frustrating failures in these years were Vacancy and White Out. In Vacancy, actor Luke Wilson took the brunt of the critics, and everyone forgot about Kate. With White Out actress unlucky even more, Reese Witherspoon was supposed to be in the movie in the early stages of development. The film was one of the most exciting projects of the early noughties. But the script kept changing, and Reese left the movie. After that, the project changed many creators until director Dominic Senna became interested. In 2006 Kate was confirmed for the lead role, and the film was discontinued in early 2007. Warner Studios decided to cancel the premiere and sent the project back for revision. No money was given for reshooting, and the creators worked with what they had. As a result, the premiere was constantly postponed and only in late 2009 did the film hit the big screens. The film was doomed to fail without any advertising. In its first week at the box office, Woody Out only managed to reach the seventh line of the chart. With a budget of $35 million at the box office, the movie only took $17 million. Kate with these results, had to sign on for a small role in Contraband with Mark Wahlberg. And this movie was her first box office success in five years. She then agreed to return to Underworld and signed on for the expensive remake of Total Recall, directed at the time by her husband Len Wiseman. Kate says Len didn't want to shoot Total Recall. He offered all the Hollywood studios his original C-Fi project, but he was ignored. And he only agreed to participate in Total Recall because of Kate, and the hope that success with this film would open the door to his project. As everyone now knows, Total Recall closed absolutely all the doors and broke the careers of several members of the cast. Wiseman went on to television, and Jessica Biel started making B-movies with 4 out of 10 ratings. Colin Farrell finally parted ways with the idea of becoming a superstar, and big movies in the future went into supporting roles. Beckinsale got it too. That same year Beckinsale also saw the release of Underworld Awakening, in which the writers tried to take the franchise to the next level. The budget was raised to $70 million at the box office, and the film grossed $160 million. This seems to be the best result for a franchise, but the studio clearly had to make a profit thanks to the DVD with such a budget. It finally closed the way for Beck and Sale to go up. From here on, it was a steady decline. Almost all of the films failed. Stoneheart's Asylum wasn't even released at the US box office. The Disappointments Room also failed at the box office and received terrible reviews from audiences and critics. After 2012, Kate only had two box office successes. Love and Friendship, where she was even praised by the critics. And the latest installment, Underworld. That franchise is probably the only movie the actress has ever seen. Although the last part of the movie had a drastically reduced budget. A film with a budget of 35 million earned 81 million at the box office. This is the last movie in the series based on the audience ratings. 
the actress did not get to star in B-movies. Kate began to shoot very rarely. If the career of an actress is not to say that all worked out, then Kate's income is all right. Kate's income is acceptable, and she has several advertising contracts hanging over her head.